Hey friends, Wayne Polson here. Listen, um, I'm just going to finish up some work down here in the ravine on our war zone area. Uh, but uh, listen, I wanted to just give a little pitch for these boots right here. These are Loa hiking boots. And um, man, back in 20, 2012, somewhere in there, when Susie and I got married, we did a Grand Canyon hike. I bought a pair of Loa hiking boots. These are the Renegade uh, model. Um, they have a Gore-Tex lining. They have a, a Vibram sole, very aggressive sole. They are comfortable boots, uh, you know, full leather. I bought identical boots back in 2012, and I'm just now getting ready to retire those. I mean, I've had them for almost 10 years, and uh, they're still in good shape. I still use them. Uh, right now, I'm breaking in these new, uh, this new pair of uh, Loas. Uh, normally these will retail for about 230 bucks. They're kind of pricey, right? But I was looking at the price of, say, um, uh, I forget the brand, Arbtech or something like that. They're, they're arborist shoes, tree worker shoes uh, for working in the canopy, working on the ground. Heck, those are super expensive, and I don't quite think they're as comfortable either. So, um, um, and I found out that these work really well in the canopy, if you're doing limb walking, things like that. They have a nice sticky sole, aggressive sole. Um, I, I really like these boots, so I'm just um, gonna give a little pitch here for these boots. They're Loa Renegades. I got these for $179 a pair from Moose Jaw just two weeks ago, not even. And so this is my first week of wearing them and they're breaking in real fine. Now I have a bunion on my left foot. I took uh, my shoes to a cobbler and I had him stretch out this area of the boot before I started wearing them so that it wouldn't interfere with the bunion and cause discomfort. But if you have normal feet, unlike me, um, you won't have to do that. But if you need to have it done, you can do that. And man, these are some comfortable boots. All right, I don't know why I did that. I just, I, I love the boots, folks, can you tell? So anyway, I've got some work to do here. Um, just a couple more logs to pull out of our side of the property, our, our, our um, side of the war zone here. There's more wood just over your shoulder back there on the 13 acre um, property. I'm not gonna mess with that yet, really, until I know that we're gonna own that property. So we're, it's still hanging in limbo, folks. Listen, what I wanna do though, before I, I don't wanna drag you along too far here with just a lot of mumbo jumbo, uh, which is easy for me to do. I'm gonna put the camera uh, up here on the slope behind me. I'm down in what I call the ravine, and it, it really looks like the ravine is the remnants of a vacated road called Williams Road that uh, was vacated, oh man, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago? I'm not exactly sure, but this is the ravine. And you can't tell from the, the video that that's an uphill slope too well, but th there is a grade there. It's probably, mm, it's probably 35 degrees, 40 degrees of a grade from where the fire is down to this flat part. But look, this part right here is pretty much flat all the way through there. When, and when you turn around and, and look behind me, there's the 13 acre land and right through here, is the other side of that ravine. It kind of goes uphill here a little bit and then right back down. So um, I'm pretty sure this is the old Williams Road that we've discovered here. We may end up making this a connector drive from our main drive off of State Road 21 uh, that brings us up to the cabin and this will just continue past our cabin to the 13 acre piece of property if we end up owning that. Susie's getting ready to go mow that 13 acre piece of property. She, uh, she doesn't own it yet, but she's working her tail off over there. You know, the owners haven't been there for a while. The yard grew up into weeds about waist high. We went over and took the brush hog there and mowed all that down. We're hoping that it'll make it a little easier for the current owners to just spend time moving stuff out of the house rather than have to deal with mowing the lawn whenever they come down here from 45, 50 miles up north. So. That's what Susie's gonna do. We're gonna see if she can make it down this little slope right here. Here she goes. She shouldn't have any trouble going down it. Going back up, it could be an issue. Oh, 
She needs me to move the tractor. All right, I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm always in her way, it seems. All right, here we go. So it's looking like she might hit a stump. She did. She went over a stump, but that's okay. She's going to make it. I think now it's a clear sailing for her. All right, so back to what I'm doing here, folks. So this is, uh, this is my project. I am going to go ahead and pick up this log here for demonstration purposes. I'm going to show you the technique that uh, I think is necessary to use when you're taking a heavy load on a forklift or a bucket or in this case a grapple up a slope because so you've got to be careful of your weight distribution so hopefully I can pick this log up here without too much trouble this is right along our fence line the west boundary Wow, <laughs> Susie just backfired. I'm gonna open this up, let it roll in, just like that. Now I'm gonna be a little heavy on my left and I'm leaning left, so I've gotta be careful getting out of here. I'm gonna clamp this down. What I'm gonna do is back out slowly in this direction. I'm gonna move the load uphill. Gonna go ahead and take the load a little lower, keep the weight low, come back this way again. Everything you do with a, with a heavy load on the front or the rear, you've gotta do it in baby steps, folks. Low and slow. Now I could uh, redistribute the load inside the grapple, but I'm gonna need the weight on that side once I get up out of this ravine. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Okay, so again, we go low and slow. And when I get up to this slope, I gotta be careful that I don't hit the ground with the grapple. So I'm gonna take it up just a little bit. Just a little bit to hover over the ground. Now as it starts to go higher, I'm going to drop the load as I go up this grade. Keeping that load low. Now I can bring it back up again. So there, I hope you're able to see that, okay? I, I'm not an expert at this. This is just uh, stuff I'm learning, folks. So I'm going to go dump this onto the burn pile. So again, you want to keep that load as low to the ground as you can while still maintaining a clearance above any obstacles. Now, as I start approaching this pile, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not going to move the grapple as I'm moving because that tends to induce motions that I don't like. It becomes a little unstable. So I'm going to get this in the right orientation, the right height. Before I get to my drop-off point, I'm going to go to the slowest, lowest gear and approach slowly. I'm just going to let it roll off right into there. Back out of the way.
and we're done. Another day from SM Heartland and a uh, little bit of fun here on the coyote. Susie's mowing, life is good. I can't wait until we own a home, a place for me to just call my home and have a place to put my stuff. Hopefully that'll happen soon. Doesn't matter though, folks, we're gonna live one day at a time, aren't we? Enjoy your life, be kind to one another. I'll see you next time.